أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Our dear viewers Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh, You are most program You are welcome to our program and the host I'm Abdul Karim Kalisa Today we have our special guest uh, in the names of Imam Muhammad Basha Arafa. I repeat the names Imam Muhammad Bashar Arafa from America. He's here with us in the studios of Salam TV. Imam Basha, you are most welcome. Oh, thank you very much. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. When did you arrive? Uh, marhaba. When did you arrive in Uganda? I arrived uh, Thursday, which was October 1st. 2015 so almost now five days four days something like that five days in Uganda yes how do you find Uganda it's so beautiful I'm, uh, I'm delighted to be back uh, you are blessed to have such a wonderful wonderful mm. uh, you know country and city Kampala when you land in Antabe it's just you have to say la ilaha illallah Muhammad <laughs> Rasulullah <laughs> have you ever visited Equator uh, equator. Uh, you mean the line? The line of equator. Yes, Viva. I did, and I paid ten thousand uh, uh, to to see how the water goes the, uh, opposite. Oh, down. you visited. Yes. What about the source of River Nile? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. E but uh, the, the people organizing your trip don't like you. Uh, well, I uh, wish you go and uh, see uh, the source of River Nile. Yeah, you would see the power of God. Mm -hmm. How the water mingles, doesn't mix with the other one comes out of the one of the biggest lake, Lake mm -hmm. Victoria, mm -hmm. and originates here. Oh, I see. Well, that's uh, that's part where uh, the Nile originate. I, yes. I visited that. You visited? Uh, last year. Oh, yeah. but not only, this time. But only just to see where uh, the water comes from. But I guess uh, there are other places. Uh, I was told about it mm. and I look forward to visiting it, inshallah. You see, for us, when we go at the American Embassy, mm. seeking for the visa to visit that great country, mm. at times they assist you to tell you it is a bit cold, take jackets, go with this, but wherever you are coming to Uganda, feel free, come as you are. No coldness, no heat. It's one of the greatest countries. You are most welcome. Thank you very much. Thank Alhamdulillah, very much. he's uh, our great visitor, Imam Muhammad. And uh, uh, he came here to Uganda specifically to meet our communities here. And uh, he has held various talks with imams. He has met some various imams. He has talked to them. He has met some youth. He has talked to them. And uh, uh, civil societies, he's talking to them. And he spared some time to come and uh, visit Salam TV to talk to everybody in the country and beyond. You are most welcome, Brother Basha. Thank you. Thank you very much. How do you see Uganda in comparison to your country? <laughs> Briefly. Uh, Briefly. Briefly. Um, well, uh, this is definitely the pearl of Africa. Oh, great. Uh, I just came uh, Thursday morning from Ghana. Mm -hmm. uh, I was mm -hmm. doing a program in West Africa. Yes. Uh, coming here, the first thing you you see is really those uh, hills and ups and downs and the mountains and the valleys and the yes, water. Yes, yes. So it's, it's really unique in, in so many ways. But I have seen also mm -hmm. uh, the people mm -hmm. very welcoming mm -hmm. and very hospitable. Yes. And uh, I have seen diversity also. I have seen Muslims and Christians. Yes. And uh, uh, there are positives and negatives. Uh, the positives that the people care about each other mm -hmm. but the negative that i have seen that uh, really there is uh, some misunderstandings and ignorance mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know when mm -hmm. it comes to religious issues and mm -hmm. uh, cultural issues so i think uh, a, a program like this uh, is very important to encourage the people in uh, in uganda to talk mm -hmm. Uh, one of the things we have in the U.S. that the people, you know, sometimes like to talk and discuss issues. Yes. And uh, that's where 
you know, I see that, uh, um, and honestly, I say that, that uh, Uganda could be a, a hub for uh, religious dialogue and cultural dialogue, because you cannot today separate religious from culture. Thank you very much, Brother Imam, for that observation. Uh, our Imam is the president of Civilization Exchange and Cooperation Foundation. That is an organization he's heading. Uh, the rest, the rest, you keep knowing him slowly, slowly, slowly. Because us, to bring him, to request him to visit Salam TV, we, we have analyzed that he's so wide and we need his experience. Uh, that observation, Imam, you've made that Uganda really is a, a country that is hospitable on the side of interreligious. Uganda has got an experience. And I think when the world started talking of coexistence, interreligious, Uganda did this work in 18, I think, 85, 1895. The country was formed into the religious wars. The coming up of Uganda was through the religious wars. Christians fighting Muslims, Catholics fighting Protestants, Protestants fighting Muslims. That's how they came on a round table and made in 1900 agreement to form the country Uganda after suffering a lot. So whoever comes to say the interreligious, the coexistence, you sound high and uh, that's how it came into Uganda. By the time people started talking about it, it had already started in Uganda. Thank you for that observation, Imam. Thank you. Uh, brother Imam, before we proceed, you came from Ghana, maybe from here you might be going somewhere. To the US. To US, back to your country. Yes. People would like to know about you briefly, briefly, for the interest of our viewers. Uh, Muhammad Bashar Arafat, born and raised in Damascus, Syria. Damascus? In Damascus, Syria. Yes. And uh, uh, went to uh, the Islamic University there hmm. and uh, graduated from the Sharia faculty and also uh, Islamic studies and Arabic language. Hmm. Uh, but also I, I was really blessed to have the, the blessings of meeting uh, the shuyukh, the scholars uh, of, of Syria, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, also uh, having the blessings of being uh, mentored by the late Grand Mufti of Syria, Sheikh Ahmed Koftaro, uh, Allah, who passed away in 2004. Mm -hmm. But oh, I oh, really oh, liked his, uh, uh, his, uh, his style of mm -hmm. outreach to both the West and the East, and back then uh, to to Europe and America, and then to the Soviet Union mm -hmm. and the communist world. So uh, living, you know, I, I remember very well late 70s mm -hmm. and early 80s uh, to uh, to live at that time. Um, seeing the other, you know, Islamic groups like Muslim Brotherhood and others. Uh, and uh, the conflicts started arising, uh, seeing the, uh, the, the Islamic revolution in Iran, mm -hmm. and then uh, experiencing the Iran-Iraq war, mm -hmm. uh, and then the problems and the civil war in Lebanon. Uh, being in Syria at that time mm -hmm. was really a very interesting uh, time, how to, uh, to uh, to, uh, to, to balance between uh, secularism, uh, socialism, yes. and secularism in terms of uh, you know, negation of God, and then uh, Islamic practice. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, you know, uh, traveling to, to England to learn English and to, to be a cultural exchange student taking off from uh, the Sharia University, mm -hmm. uh, seeing the Western world, the misunderstanding toward Islam and Muslims. Mm -hmm. And here I'm hearing from my sheikh how the people are searching really seriously about the true message of Islam and how the Imams don't speak English and don't understand the culture 
and the uh, uh, the the thinking process of mm. the Europeans versus the Americans. Yes, I I really started you know realizing more and more, and especially after I was invited to come to the United States as Imam mm. in 1989. <coughs> yes, that we have a serious problem as Muslims, mm -hmm. and that is mm -hmm. our religious institutions in the 21st century. Mm -hmm in the age of globalization which was coming up in the 80s and mm. then the 90s that our religious institutions are really still behind in terms of teaching the imams and the graduates how the west think mm. versus how the east think uh, because to understand the thinking process yes before you talk to the person that's yes. very important yes extremely important and then uh, to to understand the the culture in America, uh, for example, mm. the north of America is different than the south in True. terms of still remnants of the Civil War. True. And until mm. now we have that. Now, if you want to be an imam in America, mm. I did not take along with my Sharia subjects mm. one course how to be imam in America. If you happen to be imam in America. Mm. In New York, what is the difference between New York and Georgia, for example? Yes. What is the difference between California, being imam in California versus yes. being imam in Texas, for example? Yes. Those kind of differences, nobody taught us that. So uh, today, the imams who are coming to America, mm -hmm. I have seen that they are going through a lot of problems and sometimes deadly mistakes, mm -hmm. deadly mistakes, because of, you know, honest uh, mistake. <laughs> but they could have had avoided that if they had some training mm. before they came from Pakistan, mm. from India, mm -hmm. from Syria, from mm -hmm. Egypt, from mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. The other thing also, after living in America for the first, my first 10 years. Yes and seeing those who becoming Muslims and they want to study Islam mm. and they go and they study in Saudi Arabia, they come back. They go and they study in Egypt, they come back. They go and they study in Syria, Pakistan, they come back. I have seen the difference between each one. That some of those are coming and bringing back with them cultural practice. Imam, ba Imam Basha, that is a very important issue I want today. Mm -hmm. You are bringing it out at the level of the introduction. Before reaching to that, you are talking of the Imam in a certain state, people going out for studies in Saudi Arabia, Azhar University, go back. There is a conception, especially in our country and, and any other, any other place. How comfortable are you going to Azhar University, go back to America? There is a conception or a misconception that America don't like Muslims and Islam. How do you stay there as an imam for the interest of my viewers? Uh, I want first mm -hmm. to get that issue, <laughs> Imam Basha. This is uh, one of the important things mm. uh, that we are talking about. Yes. Um, if, you, uh, if you are going to be studying in Al-Azhar or mm. in Saudi Arabia or mm. in Syria, mm. the uh, the true knowledge is the same, w will not be changed. But yes. the way that knowledge is taught is different. Uh, and then, um, you, how you to mean, present? You mean, you mean you have failed to differentiate between Islam and the cultures of some places? And the culture. And culture, the culture of Egypt, culture of Saudi Arabia, exactly. culture of... No. The culture of Saudi Arabia is different than the culture in Egypt. Uh, and the culture of Egypt is different than the culture of Syria, and the culture mm. of Syria is different than the culture of Pakistan. Yes. Those cultural differences, we are not paying attention to it. So when the students come to study in Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. and then we are going to send them back to France, or send them back to America, we have to tell them, look, those issues are cultural. Yes. It's okay to keep your American culture French culture, mm. there is no problem. Those mm. are cultural issues and those are religious issues. So if the woman wanted to dress 
modestly but in a different color it's okay mm-hmm. yani black is not necessarily uh, islamic yellow is not necessarily islamic yes uh, pink is not necessarily i'm just giving you uh, sample an example yes. so this is really today i uh, uh, i see that we have to pay attention to that as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was paying sallam. attention mm. to the pronunciation of mm. the Arabs back then. The people of Quraysh mm. have one way of pr- uh, pronouncing. The people of Yemen have one way. The people of the east of Arabia, that's why we ended up with Qiraat. Al-Qiraat. What is Al-Qiraat? This is the cultural diversity in Arabia back then. Mm-hmm. This tribe will pronounce Wadduhe, this is Wadduha, yes. and this is uh in another way uh, this is really interesting to see why we have al qiraat al sab' or the 14 what is al qiraat al qiraat this is different way mm. to pronounce arabic and al quran which rasulullah sallallahu approved in order to uh, spread the message of the quran that it is okay to read the quran in the language of your tribe mm-hmm. and your tribe and your tribe and this is quraysh and this is the language of Quraysh. Yes. So this, I just, I, I'm giving you yeah, an example. An example. Mm. And today, uh, when you talk to people, the non-Muslims, how do you present Islam to them? Do you give them, and especially if somebody is interested in Islam, mm. do you give him right away uh, everything? Uh, and if he is or she is not ready, not ready to, to accept Islam, to, not ready to practice everything, for mm. example. Yes. Not ready to put the hijab. Hmm. Do you force her to put the hijab? And she might give up the whole <laughs> the hijab <coughs> and no. Islam completely? Or you go slowly, slowly. He is not ready to give up beer or alcohol from day number one. How do you help them to uh, gradually become a better Muslims? Or if they have differences of opinion with somebody else? Do you send him right away to kufr, <laughs> or to, uh, or you, or you, you try to explain your points and try to understand his point? Mm. This is also another problem. I have seen some people will come, and their madhab is the only madhab, and everybody else is not right, and everybody mm. is wrong. Uh, we are seeing now people allowing themselves to go ahead and and kill others yes blow up their masks exactly. just because they have different opinions mm. so this is we have seen it by the way in some point of our islamic history yes we have seen how some even <coughs> khulafa they call themselves khulafa in the umayyad period or abbasi period they did awful things they did awful things but again because they mixed religion with politics. Exactly. They mixed religion with, with politics. politics. <coughs> Abdul, I mean, some of the uh, uh, Umayyad uh, caliphs, they fought uh, some of the Sahaba because yes. they uh, broke away from, uh, from the Umayyad in, in, in Mecca, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, Abdullah ibn Zubair. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, he allowed uh, his army to to hit Abdullah ibn Zubair, even he was hiding inside mm. Al-Haram. Mm. Subhanallah. And Al-Kaaba was also, part of it was destroyed. So oh. that's the, the mixing between politics mm. and religion. So I, I don't want to go too much into that, but, uh, but this is today the 21st century. Yes, yes. How do you uh, help those who have different opinion opinions than yours to to feel that they are welcomed on the table and and uh, and they should be also respected even if you disagree with them 100 mm. percent mm. uh, but does islam has a room for that uh, the whole room for that huh? the whole room subhanallah it, uh, allah is telling me mm. that i can coexist with the people of the book yes who have different religion from mm. me completely mm. if they are nice and I'm nice to them mm. that Allah is telling me to be nicer so what about the one who had different opinion uh, than me and mm-hmm. he's still a Muslim but he he has 
uh, feeling that his madhab is 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 more correct mm -hmm. how do you welcome this diversity and that's what i learned in america today yes that you can be whoever you want but you cannot do anything to harm others but i have read that before in in the quran and i have seen it in the life of prophet muhammad but unfortunately <laughs> when i look to the middle east today and when i see how the people are behaving mm. i see it completely different than the teachings of the quran but mm. you come to other countries uh, in europe or or in america mm. you I, i'm just focusing on respect for yes for diversity respect of diversity this is very important allah is saying ya ayyuhan nas inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila litaarafu we create all mankind we created you from a single pair of male and mm. females and made you nations and tribes that you may know one another yes. mm. and in another verse allah says ومن آياته اختلاف ألسنتكم وألوانكم. One of the greatness of Allah mm. that you are different by colors and by tongues and languages and behavior. So that also going to lead to differences by the way you think and your opinions. نعم. So today one of the things we really have to pay attention to it the respect to one another. Respect to one another. Even if you are different than me. Mm. Mm. Even if you are different so, and not mm. only to respect me from outside mm. to respect me also here in your heart mm. And that's another level. We don't talk about at all uh, We just talk about that. You cannot touch somebody But if you make riba, mm. you know backbiting. Yes when you are a true believer you try to you know monitor also your heart mm from making riba there is riba with the tongue and there is also another kind of riba mm. in your heart when you look down at somebody mm -hmm. so that's another level now which you have to aspire to that imam thank you very much uh, from what you've talked and uh, how you see things uh, people believe uh, that uh, i'm now confident talking to you i have seen you being raised in syria going through Europe, you are now in America. I feel that at least you have the globe at hand. Uh, people think that uh, the Western world see Islam as a threat. Have you heard about it? Have you contemplated about it? That's uh, something that is on a table. Even being uttered by some important personalities, imam like you, come at the pulpit and say, the Western world see Islam as a threat. What um, does that one mean? I just want you to know, mm. in order to understand this, you have to go back 100 years mm. and 200 years mm. and to the colonization era. Yes. Uh, because before that there was the Crusades mm. and always there has been interaction yes. and conflicts uh, and domination. Mm. Today we don't have colonization, but we have another kind of threat, mm. and that is the demonization of others and the disrespect of others. Yes, I see it. It's practiced by uh, here and practiced practiced by here, mm. practiced by some Muslims mm. and practiced by some Christians, and uh, this is a remnant of of other problems in in the past yes. some people they are still uh, you know for example go to Europe you will see the the feelings mm -hmm. toward Muslims worse than in in America mm -hmm. because in Europe they still you know they still remember mm -hmm. uh, the Ottomans for example uh, having uh, uh, the uh, the siege against Vienna mm. yeah, and the last one was 1683 so uh, the people in Spain they I mean they still say to say that to their kids mm. how also the Muslims used to be here in Cordoba and that was almost 500 years uh, 
the people in America who mm -hmm. came and they left Europe and they left the religious wars and they came, they don't have that as much as the Europeans have it. But still now we have people who are truly trying to raise these issues all the time mm -hmm. by, you know, uh, in a systemic way to present me as a terrorist, present me as an extremist. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, when we are seeing people like Qaeda, Boko Haram, Shabab and others mm -hmm. and, and Daesh who are doing things like that, that is affirming to the rest of the people in Europe and in America uh, that, you see, that is Islam. Yes. And those are the Muslims. So what do you expect? And this is add more challenge for me and others mm -hmm. who are trying to reach out. I have to empower myself also with media, mm -hmm. with knowledge, mm -hmm. in order to explain to the people uh, the true message of, of Islam. Mm -hmm. And now, walillahi alhamd, we are in a better situation than mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. Today, there is no more domination you know, by big media powers. There is also now the people have access to uh, you know facebook and they can make exactly. their own small videos that's true and things are changing things are changing the people are finding by by themselves that mm. really islam is religion of of peace and love and harmony but we are facing another challenge and that mm. is extremism radicalism people who uh, who want to take the law by their hand and they want just to go and, and kill and, and mm. blow up mm. and of course there are I mean the people who are going to uh, bring this and repeat it day in and day out that this is Islam this is Islam this is Islam mm. so when you are showing somebody these kind of images 24 hours every day even if you are completely different but indirectly they are going to have that I said in America mm. Almost every day, mm -hmm. in most of the mosques, they have iftars. And they invite, you know, neighbors, they invite teachers, they invite police officers, they invite firefighters. That's becoming part of our culture, just to invite. If the Muslim community wanted to make a day of peace mm -hmm. in Uganda, yes. just call it the day of peace. Yes. And you'd like to have food and... Uh, activities and games yes. and everybody is welcome everybody is welcome. everybody is welcome mm. of course you are going to have a different reaction at the end of the day exactly we have to pay attention to the issue of feeding the people mm. i mean rasulullah would encourage us mm. يعني, to feed the public not mm. only muslims mm. because some people um, I'm not going to, you know, make this because I don't want the kuffar to come and eat. To me, that he is crazy and she is crazy if they believe like that without feeding and showing the people the generosity, the blessings of Allah on you. Yes. Rasulullah used to feed the people of, uh, of Mecca mm. through Khadija. Khadija spent uh, her wealth on Rasulullah Sallallahu If you want to make a difference in yes. Uganda, mm. you have to come up with social programs. Mm. Mm. Look at the Jewish community in America. Yes. They have a lot of programs, social programs, social programs stronger than the Muslim social pro uh, programs. Mm -hmm. uh, way before 9-11. Mm. Uh, so their relation with the community is completely different than the Muslims' relation. Now, after 9-11, things are changing. And the Imams are saying, oh, no, 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 this is home. This is our country. Mm. Because before, whatever happens in Lebanon, in Palestine, in Iraq, blah, 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 the Muslim community in America always donating. Mm. But they don't used to donate a lot when there is a hurricane, when there is an earthquake, mm. or other social problems. Mm. I put this important point you are talking about on imams imams are the leaders of their communities imam has a chance of speaking to his believers five times a day one mm -hmm. let me tell you this we believe that the imams or anybody 
lives here go to Azhar University or go to Madina Islamic University do his studies comes back lead the community without administrative skills I don't know whether in their syllabus there is that course of administrative skills yet he's coming to administer the community the huge the fragile community I see there is something that you need to do as imams. Professionalism. Professionalism. This is something we don't study with our Quran and Hadith and, and Mustalah and Fuqa um, and Sira. We don't study professionalism. How to be professional. How to ask somebody if you don't have money to hire in your masjid. But how to ask a brother who is good in accounting. Yes. To take care only of accounting. Mm. How to ask somebody who is good in you know, business administration to organize your office. <laughs> I was sharing with them how when we go to churches, look, when mm -hmm. we go to synagogues, look mm -hmm. how they manage their church and, and synagogue. And then I will tell them, even mm -hmm. in America, mm -hmm. look now when we go to the mosque. Yes. Even, you know, mosques in America, but still you will see a little bit of Something. difference between the church and the synagogue and the mosque because of the uh, business administration that we don't have in the masjid. That's number one. Number two, you have people mm. calling, mm. leaving a message. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I sent an email, but mm. nobody answered me. This, I hear it a lot from non-Muslims. That you guys, uh, mm. and then I have to explain to them, well, this is a problem. Somebody would call, want to ask a question, and mm. leave a message, and mm. nobody calls back. Uh, that's really an issue. Exactly. Especially here in Uganda, the imams do voluntary work. I would say at 90%. Few or none, you may find being paid and he's sure of his salary at the end of the month. Don't you think that uh, the work of professionalism disappears due to the lack of remunerations of our imams? Voluntary comes, read prayers, sit at the end of the month, he wants to take his children to school. Voluntary work. And nobody is behind that. It's putting there a masjid, after putting a masjid, we look for imam, lead that masjid. Then disappear. People will come and pray and go. When they ask for money, they will throw some little coins. Don't you think that that one is eating your professionalism as imam? This is uh, one of the issues that we really have to pay attention to it. Today some people come and they say, I have this money and I want to build a masjid. And then somebody else, I have this money and I want to build a masjid. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the others, we are building a lot of masjids and that's it. We are closed even here in Uganda. <laughs> you find in a place there are three masjids okay. and... We spend on the masjid sometimes let's say those big massages, mm -hmm. sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And then we start, you know, negotiating with the Imam mm -hmm. with a very, you know, very <laughs> minimum. minimum salary. Mm -hmm. How do you want the Imam to live? How do you want the Imam to, to, to perform? if he has to think about this, about this, about that. Mm. So this is a problem not only here. I have seen this in Syria. I have seen this everywhere. And unfortunately to say that mostly in the Sunni world, mm. uh, that uh, the Imams are not taken care of financially also. So that's why you end up with, you know, those who could not make it to doctors and engineers and others, uh, they will say, okay, let me be imam mm. or others who are doctors and engineers but they had no chance to study true uh, sharia also they are becoming imams mm. but they don't have the background so we are really ought to look into this and empower the uh, the position of the imam and and listen to their needs I mean when I was in Belgium and I, we were doing imams training the imams will tell me, look, uh, I'm busy the whole time. Yes. And I have only one day off. And in that day, I need to take care of my family, of my wife, the kids. And I have no time to learn 
Flemish. I mean, that's the other uh, local language over there. Mm. I don't have time to learn, you know, German or English. So this is, this is another issue. When you talk about imams in Europe or imams in, mm. in America. Mm. So really, if we want to make a change, we have to look at the uh, position of imams more seriously and see what he needs to empower him in order to have a better community. Thank you very much. A brief uh, imam, uh, the problems of the world emanates from the youth. When you analyze, you find that the youth are becoming a problem. When you talk of fundamentalism, it will be the youth. When you talk of everything you would wish that may cause havoc, everybody will be pointing at the youth. What comment would you make vis-a-vis -vis the problem you see in the world? vis-a-vis -vis the instabilities at all places. Could you be having some experience? Have you heard about it? Do you see any problem with the, the current youth of today? I would like to start by saying about the family mm. itself. Yes. Uh, who raised that child. Uh, mm. How much they paid attention before they got married that's true to the issue of how many children we are going to have from your uh, planning fr i'm not going to say from your <laughs> planning i'm going to say from the time we decided to marry okay yes. how many children you are going to have how much you can uh control how much you can raise well how much you can really educate mm. so they are, you know, uh, well educated. Mm. You can have as many children as you want, but those are responsibility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's another thing you have to pay attention to. What kind of education the family gave to that child when, when he or she were growing up? Yes. Did his father and mother had time? to sit with him and with her or they were so busy so they left him to the street and to the internet mm -hmm. and to the TV uh, to teach him so that's number one we have to pay attention to the first uh, step that's the family the family live and then you go out uh, to the uh, um, community centers mm -hmm. uh, it could be also uh, the mosque Mm. or the church who are providing community services mm. for our youth mm. because as a Muslim you have to pay attention to the spiritual well-being of the child mm. as well as the emotional and the educational and the academic mm. um, this is uh, this is a big 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 challenge before all of us mm. and if we don't provide the proper education for our youth uh, some thieves, you know, might taking them from you. Even he is living with you at home, but somebody else is already texting him or texting her. Mm. Somebody else is filling their time while you are have, you know, no time to, to see exactly what is bothering mm. him or her. Mm. So that's, uh, uh, you know, where also, the, the imams and, and the masjid who have youth programs uh, are, you know, so much to be uh, thanked for that because this is uh, the, the future of the whole community. Mm. And again, may Allah help the imams to, to deal with the youth in a way <coughs> that is uh, acceptable for them, uh, in a way that is... Uh, uh, reasonable and not to push them away uh, from the mosque and from mm -hmm. the religion completely because you were too harsh so they will leave from here and they go somewhere else uh, I mean this is an issue always we face in America not only with the Muslim community mm -hmm. also with the non-Muslim community yes thank you very much <coughs> lastly our Islamic community here in Uganda is under one umbrella, Uganda Muslim Supreme Council. It was formed in 1972. 
in America do you have such an umbrella that brings together all Muslims in America? We have, it's called Islamic Society of North America. Mm -hmm. And also there is another <laughs> umbrella, it's called Islamic Circle of North America. Uh, even though it's interesting to mm -hmm. see that <coughs> this has m predominantly one culture mm -hmm. and the other one is predominantly another culture. Mm -hmm. uh, but mostly you have the Islamic Society of North America, we call it ISNA. Mm -hmm. In their conferences you have close to 40,000 uh, people, they come to their annual conferences. Mm -hmm. ICNA mm -hmm. you will have close to 20, 25,000. Mm -hmm. But there are, uh, you know, other organizations that focusing on, let's, for example, civil rights issues. There are yes. others. There are other focusing on uh, public relations. Uh, yes. And also, there are other organizations focusing on medical issues for all the doctors uh, all over the United States and Canada. Mm -hmm. And I really uh, uh, see that the, the Muslim community in the United States because of the American system, because of the American culture, mm. uh, very well organized in terms of outreach. And uh, the way they, <coughs> I mean, each, each masjid and community is organized. But the umbrella uh, <coughs> organizations, mm -hmm. uh, those are samples of them. Well, we call it ISNA or mm. ISNA. And do the government of America subsidize to your programs? The does government it, does of it America subsidize? has a different system than the the Arab world or other countries mm. that they allow you as a non-profit organization yes. to receive tax-free donations. Mm. So mm. that mm. helps a lot, not only the Muslim, but all the religious and mm. non-religious organizations who also can have <coughs> tax-exempt free organizations mm. as long as their mission and goal is to serve the public mm -hmm. and that public could be muslims could be non-muslims that public could be religious or non-religious mm -hmm. i mean there are hospitals are non-profit there are radio stations are non-profits so uh, but when it comes to the muslim community mm -hmm. all of them they form non-profit organization and yes. tax exam yes. so uh, so they get uh, to benefit from the donation of the people so the people mm. who are donating they don't have to pay tax on that mm. that's how we get our uh, sub uh, to be subsidized by the government what i know in the western world uh, the, the those first world countries democracy freedom of everything mm -hmm. how did you accept it when we live here when i have not asked that question that's, you would have asked him how did you accept a woman to be an imam we see it on youtube we <laughs> see i don't know whether it is film for us they bring it here we think that she's an imam yeah. how 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 did you in america in america how did you sit and accept that dr wadud dr who uh, amina wadud amina wadud amina wadud like anybody else mm. and she's not the first one and she's not the last one mm. people are free to do whatever they want but is it uh, according to the uh, a sunnah. Here in, Uganda, here in Uganda they cut her. No, no, Go no. no. <laughs> uh, we should not, I mean, do something <laughs> like that. People are free to express their to views. To express their views now. I mean, now in Los Angeles we have a special mosque only for women. I don't know if you have heard about that. Special mosque. Only for women. That they one is okay. Because they got sick and tired from the men. They are talking who about are, themselves. They are mistreating them. Mm. Of course, that's their opinion. Is it, uh, if this is Islamic or not, that's another story. Mm. I mean, in America, people are free to do whatever they want. But is it right or, or, or wrong? That's, mm. that's another story. But we <coughs> grew up to, you know, mm. to believe that you have the right to do whatever you want. But is it right or wrong? That's another, another story. Uh, we have mm. the government, you know, will not tell anybody mm. if he is with a woman, you know, mm. um, as, until the woman complain or the man complain that they hurt each other. Then the police will come. But the police will not come and tell mm. somebody walking with a woman, who is she? Is she your wife? Is she your sister? They are not ask. That, that's, unless somebody attacks somebody, then the police will 
will, will get involved. Mm. But the people are free to do whatever they want. Until you break the law, then uh, the, the police will interfere. And this is one of the things the imams uh, who mm. came from Uganda and, and Zanzibar, when I took them to meet with the community relation with the police department in Baltimore, yes, uh, the lady from, from Uganda, uh, actually I think from Kampala, she mm. was amazed to see that, wow, you are allowed to do all of this and the police will not uh, get involved? If you want to have a conference, you know, 10,000 people, 20,000, they said no, unless if somebody called and complained that there is a problem, problem with the traffic. Mm. Uh, mm. But as long as you don't break the law, mm. go, do whatever you want to do. Mm. Is it halal or haram? Is it right or wrong? That's another question. That's another story. A mm. woman want to lead the prayer? That's, uh, in America, they say that's her right. But is it Islamically uh, sanctioned or not? That's another story. Yes. Uh, do you have uh, uh, a committee of scholars in America to deal, have, to deal with such issues? We have Al Majlis Al Fuqhi, America Shamali, like uh, Fuqh Council of North America, mm. uh, meets regularly, has also board members of male and female. And uh, in America, just until a couple of years ago, the head of the Islamic Society of North America was, was a woman, doc Dr. Ingrid Madsen. Mm. So, uh, and she is also, uh, I think she is part of the Fuqh Council of mm. North America. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, we still have a few minutes, like two minutes, to wind up our program. Could you be having any message to Ugandans? I, I really would like to, and if to you say are, yes. that uh, uh, this beautiful country, I mean, could be also a hub in East Africa mm -hmm. for, religious uh, uh, for religious tolerance, for religious coexistence, and uh, for... Uh, the celebration of diversity and uh, to be a country where people can come from not only from other African countries but also from Europe mm. to to see uh, to see to see that kind of uh, activities mm. you are living in one of these uh, uh, blessed pieces of land on this earth I think I think I mean as somebody just from outside but I think you can benefit a lot by taking care of, uh, you know, of the uh, infrastructure yes. of, of the country. Mm -hmm. And that's where, I th to be honest with you, when I came last year and now I'm coming this year, I'm seeing that the mosque and the church, both, they can do better in terms of uh, you know, taking care of the infrastructure, mm -hmm. mobilizing the community to mm -hmm. do voluntary work. Yes. And clean the streets, uh, uh, educate the masses about, you know, different issues. Uh, there has to be more collaboration mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. the, the church and the mosque on, uh, on uh, social programs. Yes. Not only religious programs, but also social, social programs. programs. And I, if I may just say one thing, no. that I would like also to thank uh, everybody who was uh, instrumental in my visits again, and especially the, the U.S. Embassy here in Kampala, mm. who invited me last year and this <coughs> year, <coughs> and also the scholars uh, and religious leaders of uh, other faith traditions who also welcomed me here. Thank you very much. There is a point you made up there about opening up, opening gates. Did you invite some people during Ramadan? In at, America. At least uh, here, yeah, here you, you say you were asking yes, yes, a certain yes. message. Yes. I can assure you that uh, for the good time I have been active in this work, Ramadan American Embassy opens for us. We go for Iftar. That program is always there gives us presents, and so on and so forth. So I didn't know that the courage is there, and, and you are also and doing... And are there other Arab uh, embassies open for iftar for you guys? Or? The Arabs. 
Yes, they give us dates and they <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Alhamdulillah, so uh, we have been with our brother, he's from America. The state is called Maryland? Yeah, Maryland. Maryland. In the city of Baltimore. Yeah, Baltimore. See, for them, they, 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 their tongue is soft. Ours is heavy, we may not pronounce <laughs> it well. And uh, we thank you, our viewers, for being with our Imam. Inshallah, we keep in touch and uh, I can assure you that he's here today. When he's not here, uh, Salam TV will make sure that uh, we bring his lectures. He moves all over the world. He's talking to everybody. Uh, and uh, we thank the American Embassy for really giving us access to Imam to come and talk to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much.